even at that time, I felt I was quite different, and I wanted to maintain that difference. So you felt limit, limitless already. <laughs> That's definitely a mindset that I, I. When did yeah? When did that start for? When did when did that uh, that mantra or whatever you want to call it? Uh, so I didn't mindset. really I didn't really define it as anything for a long time, but. During my early days in wrestling, you know, there's there's a lot of struggle and, and rough times, and there was a point where, well, two points. One one point I was homeless for a while, and then there was another point where I was living out of my car, and in my mind, I had decided. I didn't really know what it meant to be a man, and I had to make the decision to either overcome the circumstances or submit, fold. Mm. And to me, the mindset of doing something about what you're not happy about is one of the most powerful mind frames that you can carry. Mental fortitude has become something that I value above most things because with mental fortitude comes the ability to overcome said issue instead of exacerbating it. Mm -hmm. And that became very important to me. And so it's something that's been around for me for a long time, but I didn't define that until maybe uh, after two or three uh, turndowns from WWE, because I had like three tryouts there and all of them were no. Mm. And uh, if it wasn't for William Regal, uh, I don't think that I would have really figured out who I am, uh, him, and, him and Dusty Rhodes. And... Um, after that, I was like, I feel like my ability to mentally take on things and figure out how to overcome them and then create that roadmap and follow those steps to the T, execute as best as possible. I, I could do this in a limitless manner. Like it felt like that power was limitless and I was like, cool. I think this is a great word because people would say that about what I do in the ring. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is fitting, because they'll think it's about what I do in the ring. But for me, this is about my lifestyle and my mindset. So it was a really special term. Yeah, I mean, that, there's a lot to unpack there that I want to go back to, because that, that's really cool. Uh, you mentioned being homeless, li living out of your car, mm. overcoming that stuff, not even... I, I love that you're talking about the mental aspect of it, because uh, I think that's... That's a huge thing uh, for people to be able to cross the bridges as they come to them and not, not, not push too far ahead or dwell on the back. You kind of got to live in the present that way and figure out whatever is happening right then and there, right? It's the same thing I say to some friends, man, because some of my associates may go through a thing and, and they'll want to talk about the thing in the past. And I'm like, listen, if you dwell on that, it's hard to look forward. It's hard to make that next step because you're too busy looking back. Mm -hmm. If you watch people in races um, or the Olympics, when they're running their sprints, most times they aren't looking back unless their lead is that big. Like they want to keep their eyes on the prize. And I feel that way about rough times in life because they're going to come, right? Yes. This is life. We're going to deal with things that are difficult. We're going to deal with things that hurt us, things that make us unhappy, things that make us nervous, things that give us anxiety. But the ability to master your mind and control what you're thinking and apply it to the things you want to do is a power that I think that most people underestimate. Yeah. So, yeah. Or maybe just don't... Um uh, uh, put a lot of levity in it, you know, maybe. Or maybe, I, I don't know this, but everyone is made differently and mm. deals with their own brain. Yeah. But maybe they're kind of scared to deal with that. You 100%. Know? Yeah. Fear is, fear is definitely one of those difficult things. Self-consciousness, everything like that. And, mm -hmm. and uh, the bad side of ego. There's a good side of ego too, people, but there's the bad side of ego that like makes you think, well, I can't be doing that, you know? Mm -hmm. like, and it's like, no, you you can. You can do whatever the hell you want. Yeah. You only get this. You only get the chance to do it once, people. And like, well, unless you believe in reincarnation, but that's a that's, thing. That's a thing. I mean, I hope that's a thing because I would like to keep coming back as, as other stuff. But it's not like you get to remember it unless you. I don't know. I just went on a, on a tangent and just looked over at my director. He's like, "You're going on." <laughs> but yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I just I just think about that because 
at the end of the day, we don't get to take anything with us. We don't, you know, whatever it is that happens, whatever you believe, doesn't matter. Um, unless you're one of the people that remembers your lives before, mm -hmm. you don't get to take that with you. So seize the moment that you got in front of you, have fun with it, whatever that is to you. Don't be scared to uh, follow that, right? Seize the day. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got one in. <laughs> that was a goal today. Oh, that was a good one. How could I make it work? Oh, yeah. Wow.